Welcome to the 10th IGC events where we now focus on geothermal, which is presented by Think Geo Energy and EnerChange. My name is Jochen Schneider. I am the director of EnerChange and glad to welcome you and Claire Baxter from Sequence in New Zealand. She will speak today about enhancing drilling collaboration with innovative cloud solutions and workflows. Claire holds a Bachelor of Science in Geology and Geography from the University of Canterbury in New Zealand. Now she's working towards a Master's of Energy at the Auckland University. She's working with Sequent for eight years throughout Asia, Pacific, Latin America, Europe and Africa and was involved in a variety of 3D modeling projects in geothermal, mining, hydrogeology across a variety of deposit types. She now fo focuses as a technical sales advisor on supporting the growth and needs of the geothermal market in this region and is active as WING UK country ambassador. Claire, we are looking forward to your presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you and um, hi to everyone who is listening. Uh, today I'm very much going to be focusing my talk on uh, uh, the software that we provide in, in focusing on collaboration and new software around innovation in cloud solutions and workflows. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Sequent, Sequent is a global software company and we are headquartered in New Zealand. It develops or aims to develop software and tools and solutions to tackle the subsurface challenges we face in a range of different industries, including energy, mining, civil and environmental. For us, this includes a huge range of um, different solutions that we need to look at, including the ability to give data a voice, allowing people to have insights into the data and allowing it to tell a story all the way through to supporting the sustainable decisions that all stakeholders involved need to make in order to have a successful project or come to come to fruition. Sequin have been involved in the geothermal industry since 2012 and our solutions now support the production of about 60% of geothermal power capacity globally with our customers that you can see some of them here on, on the screen. Today I'm going to be bringing you a couple of stories from these customers with a focus on borehole and well targeting and planning. So when we think about a geothermal project for this, specifically from the subsurface context, the first thing that sits in the heart of all of the different decisions that are made is the conceptual model. And so the ability to be able to create a good conceptual model, or at least as least risky conceptual model as possible, allows us to make better decisions around the life cycle of the geothermal project itself. But the conceptual model also has a very important role because it's from this, this space in which we start to um, interact and integrate with a whole range of different stakeholders. This includes communication with communities and different non-technical holders, such as investors and, and government as well. Data interpretation it, itself, um, particularly as we get new data coming in resource management and resource assessment, and for what I'm going to be focusing on today, the well planning side of things, which is where we actually get to pull the resource out of the ground or pump it back in for re-injection. If we think back to where, um, to where well planning actually started and the technology that we had, we had a lot of success just by using cross sections and pen and paper. But as the world develops and as it continues to develop very rapidly in the tools and capabilities of technology, it becomes um, even better to be able to move into 
the different realms that we can actually use, use and utilize. As an example here on the screen on the right, you can see that we have a conceptual model where we have a range of different data types. Now, by bringing this into the scene in 3D, 3D space, it gives us better contextualization as to how these different data types integrate with each other. Whereas with a cross section, we only get that planar view and sometimes we miss that integration of, of that 3D space and what's happening both in front and behind that cross section. What we can also see is the actual well planning can look at targeting different shapes within the 3D space that we weren't able to do prior a lot more accurately. And what we are starting to hear is an example from one of our customers using Leapfrog for their well planning tool in Iceland, being ESO and, and Reykjavik Energy, is once they've been able to integrate the geology, the geophysics, the temperature, as well as the geochemistry all into the one space, they actually had higher success rate in drilling, bringing it up to 80%. And they also were able to drill um, the two best wells that they've ever drilled. So for us, one of the key challenges that we heard a lot from our customers is, I have a really good conceptual model, but how does a geoscientist actually communicate to the drilling engineers, whether they're consultants or whether they're in another department? Or, and then once again, how do the drilling engineers then bring back the results directly back into the conceptual model so that it can be updated a lot more accurately? Or if there are slight changes that need to be made, how can you actually understand those changes to the impact of what you're going to be targeting within the 3D conceptual model itself? So we've designed a directional well planning tool that allows you to integrate and create a well plan directly within the conceptual model itself. It allows you to plan section by section so you can create a huge range of different um, shapes that are required, whether it's simple vertical well, all the way through to your J-shape and S-shape wells. And at each of the different sections, you can plan by using a hold, a build, a build and hold, build and drop, build to length, and build to inclination. It also provides flexibility for you to go back into an individual segment and to be able to change it and play around with parameters such as the turn rate, as an example. And then from here, we can evaluate the conceptual model onto the well plan itself. And this gives us the ability to see what is the likelihood of the different measured depths that you're going to hit different geological features within the subsurface while you're drilling. Or it can also let you see what your potential temperature profile is going to be while you're drilling as well, which is always a good thing to bring into your report. And you can see an example of this on, on the right hand side with the measured depth to temperature curve. In order to assist in the integration with the drillers and being able to change or integrate with a huge range of different tools that they need specifically to complete their jobs accurately, is we've developed a range of different export functions. Um, one being the drill well planning export that gives you the headers and then the line by lines of the well plan itself. And as you'll hear from Supreme Energy later on, we can then take the results while you're drilling, bring them back into the conceptual model, and you can then change and maneuver your well plans as need be. So it offers a lot of flexibility and um, a space for collaboration and communication between the different parties. So I thought I might take you to two completely different examples. The first one being a GeoERA project which we supported um, the geological survey of Catalonia in Spain on. This is the MUSE project where it was very important for them 
to be able to get transparency within the entire project itself. Here, they have built a regional scale conceptual model um, of the Hirona region, and it's focused on defining the extent of the sedimentary basin. They used data which was publicly available from surfaces, cross-sections, geophysics, and borehole data. And the whole idea behind this model is they want to utilize it for heat targeting so that people from the, people from the municipality or from Hirona city will be able to have a look and understand what is the potential for geothermal heat underneath their feet. It will then be used further on, I think they're going to start the next stage very soon, to input this into a fee flow model to allow them to understand the resource assessment slightly more accurately um, than what they can with the current data that they have. The other example is one from Supreme Energy in Indonesia. And this is a really nice uh, case study where I'm gonna let them do the talking and talk through how they went from using LeapFrog and the well planning tool from exploration stage through to well planning, all the way through to drilling and the success that they've had with that. So I will be playing a video. Um, hopefully you'll be able to hear it well through the, uh, through the speakers. However, if you are struggling, you are able to go back and watch it. It's available on YouTube. And I think Jochen's gonna put the link to the same video um, into the chat so that you can click on that and have a look at it as well. Supreme Energy is the new geothermal company established in 2008. Uh, it has uh, three operating fields, uh, one in West Sumatra, Almora Labu, one in the South Sumatra, Rantaradab, and the last one is closer to Jakarta in Lampung, called the Raja Basa field. Geothermal uh, have a lot of variation in the geology. If you have data that can you update in one platform quickly, it will help you a lot. Managing the variation within the geothermal reservoir is kind of a main challenge for us. Every geothermal field has a different characteristic that makes it very, very unique. And I think there is no one single formula for it. So, um, you know, that's um, that's how we deal with Mother Nature. Geothermal is very dynamic process on it. It really depends on the geological environment and the evolution of the hydrothermal system itself. The 3G data, the geochemistry, geophysics, and uh, geology data, uh, surface, surface data, subsurface data. That's the key importance, and then how we manage that, how we collect that data, and try to come up with uh, a good conceptual model to target the exploration well. We need to integrate all the data to be able to get a full picture of the subsurface condition, and we need to have a tool that can integrate all this information and that can visualize what is going on underneath there. We've been using technologies in development drilling we update the model in a real-time condition so when the new data available we could regularly update it actually having that kind of integrated platform enable us to uh, take uh, important decisions like can we change the direction to accommodate a new model based on the updated data can we present it to the managements for kind of a multi-million dollars decisions just to kind of a refine our knowledge also for development strategy, but mainly provide a uh, platform that could help us to make that kind of decision during development. The flexibility that pro uh, Lipro provide to integrate not just point, not just well data, but also a surface and potential don't know something that we take. We can easily tie in within a one holistic models. This is really the communication tool. This is a tool to communicate with a people not in the subsurface business, people that really not familiar with the subsurface condition and with uncertainty. Not only on meeting with the management, but also on a daily basis, we can look at together, get to the same understanding, and then come up with a better uh, solution. 
we successfully completed drilling in one of our field in Wadalabu. And we have exceeded the steam target capacity. And to me, one of the key success factor to that is basically being able to communicate to peers, management, and being able to use it as a tool to make a decision collectively. But then if you consider other benefits of a geothermal, like the sustainability and the environment and the of the geothermal, it's really, uh, people need to understand that it's, there's a lot of benefit in that that need to be appreciated. There's so much potential here in Indonesia because of its location along the volcanic chain. And so to summarize a little bit of the video, if you are unable to grasp some of the key concepts that were discussed within it, um, Supreme Energy used LeapFrog to build the conceptual model and they really like it because they can bring in a huge range of different data that is required. From here, they, they use it for well planning and well targeting. And then while they were drilling, they were able to take the results almost in real time, bring it back into the conceptual model, update the conceptual model, and then use it as a communication tool, not only to their peers and to management to make decisions around the current um, well path that it's projecting on, but also to external stakeholders that are very vital in making some of those uh, multi-million dollar decisions. And I guess this comes through to one of the biggest challenges that we're now trying to tackle um, with our geothermal customers that we're seeing today. And the process of planning your well very much comes into this. Essentially, the more, I guess, I guess there's kind of a pre-COVID world and in a COVID world these days. Um, but pre-COVID would always have the flexibility to be able to sit around in the same boardroom and discuss the model and the conceptual model and discuss what's going on, what you think is, is happening, um, what do you see within the data. And then, however, sometimes this is also a challenge with many people um, traveling, data or kinds of data being in many different places and sort of many different locations, whether it's on your company server, on your local laptop, on someone's hard drive, might be um, there with, with a consulting company that's doing the work collaboratively with you. And so what we've done is we have also created a cloud solution that helps you in creating one version of the truth of your data. Um, so it allows you to bring all of the different types of data into one place. It has version control associated with all of this data, um, which means that you know that when you are coming to look at your data, you're looking at the most recent type of model um, or the recent data that has been collected. It's also a place for, to allow collaboration. And this is something which has been completely exasperated in the last well, half year, six months, seven months or so, where all of a sudden we start working so solo um, in a virtual world where we're having to communicate with our peers uh, through the computer and, and through the screens. And so what we've been able to do with the cloud is create a space with the conceptual model and with the well, targeting where you can do 3D comments, you can have conversations all within this 3D scene. These are tracked and so it's all auditable as you move move through. You don't have to remember what you did um, a year or a couple of years ago. And it also means that um, it also means that things are notified. So if you have made a comment your colleague will get notified straight away. And in today's world, that just assists so much more in the efficiencies within the way that we are having to work or being now creating a space, a new space for us to work. So that takes us to the end of today. Um, if you are very interested in gaining a bit more understanding as to how LeapFrog and how you can communicate with the drilling companies and, and plan your wells, 
in the same 3D space as all of your other data, as well as that communication place of, of communicating with your peers, communicating with your managers or within the cloud, um, please feel free to reach out and get in contact. The other thing is we're also very interested in understanding what are the challenges that you're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. For us, our goal is to try and make your life a lot easier um, and being able to facilitate and create more efficient workflows for you. So thank you for your time today. Interesting presentation uh, with with the video, which which worked in the end. That's good. The presentation is now open for discussion, and first question is: What is is the difference between uh, your uh, software, the Leapfrog software, and for example, uh, Petrel? Yeah. So I guess. Part of the background comes into play. I think one of the key differences is the way in which it goes about doing the modeling pro workflow itself. So Leapfrog only uses an implicit type of modeling. Um, this has enabled us to create an almost automatic workflow within it. And so your models are directly connected to the input data itself. That not only helps you to, I guess, See the, see the woods within the trees as such um, and give data a voice, but it also means that if you need to make changes, um, it does it all automatically and will process or filter down um, all of the different aspects of your model automatically, whether it's the geology, the alteration, the temperature. And then with that, with for us, it's about creating um, these interoperabilities and these integrations with the different tools that you need to for a successful geothermal project, whether it's um, well planning, which I talked about today, whether it's flow model simulations such as TUF and fee flow, um, or whether it's something as simple as bringing in some of the geophysics and, and micro seismic time dependent data into your model. Thanks. Another question is, you mentioned before the geochemistry is also involved in, in such a model. How does this work? Yeah, so there's different ways in which you can incorporate the geochemistry into it. Um, you can bring it in as points. We, a lot of the time we end up with different chemistry samples through time. So we can also bring in time domain point data. Um, and that allows us to under, to see the chemistry in 3D space with all of our other data um, associated with the model. So it helps you to make these correlations between what's what's happening. The other thing you can also do is you can interpolate your chemistry data. So you can build 3D isosurfaces through the data, which allow you, if there's enough data, then it allows you to see trends within the data um, and to also do some some very basic geostatistic analysis on the geochemistry data as well. Um, but at the same time, you know, we don't do the 2D analysis. So there's no ternary diagrams or anything like that. Okay. So as I see, there are no more questions here. Um, I want to thank you very much for this nice presentation. Uh, I think you will have an announcement. Yes. So um, one of the things you may be interested in is Sequina hosting a conference, a virtual conference next week called the Lyceum. It's free to register. We are going to have two sessions um, running within this time zone next Wednesday on the 23rd. Um, in terms of the geothermal talks and discussions that we are going to have, we've got people from uh, Cerula, Supreme Energy, uh, Star Energy. Um, you can see some of the panel discussions that we have, including Mara Broma and, and Kate Young as part of the wing wing discussion um, and Ormat. So that kind of gives you a bit of a taste. We're also very excited because we are going to have a keynote presentation from Microsoft talking about um, where they see the future of technology as a whole.
Okay, thank you very much. I, I found it just before the Lyceum. It, it sounds very much well. You have very interesting speakers here. Uh, they, they, it's all virtual, I, I assume. It is, and it's also free to register. So if you register and can't make any of the discussions and in panels or, or talks, then they will also be on demand for a year later, but you do have to register to gain access to that. Okay, then thanks again. Um, then we move on uh, to our announcement. We will announce the next webinar, which will be in one week at two o'clock. Um, here, Matthäus Irl from the Technical University of Munich from the chair of energy system will speak about flexibility options for the electricity and heat generation with geothermal. So thank you very much for uh, joining the webinar. Thank you very much, Lea, for this very good, nice presentation. Have a nice weekend and see you next week or in the future. Bye-bye. Thank you.